How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. To some extent, we already know that retail stores use all the tricks in the book in order to get you to buy more. So today's video is about how retail stores brainwashes you to buy more than you want. It's kind of like meeting a very good salesperson. You have no knowledge of this product before meeting this person. And somehow after this meeting, you have a couple of these products that you bought from this person and you have no idea why. Now I say brainwash in the title. So this kind of implies that you are being mind controlled. It's kind of like a gradient, right? If you tell someone to do something and if you can 100% make sure this person always does what you say that you tell them to do, it's kind of like mind control. If it's maybe half the time, then you can kind of go, well, it's only 50% mind control because it only happens, you know, it doesn't always, always happen that they'll always follow your orders. So what do you call it? If you are somewhat doing mind control and you're only doing it halfway, it works half the time or maybe 5% of the time. I call it, if it's anything less than 100%, let's say 99% success rate, it's kind of like marketing, right? They're just marketing it to you and they have a certain rate of success where you're gonna follow what they want you to do, which is to buy their product. Now to figure out how all this mind control stuff works, you can kind of think of it like in that Inception movie where they go into the dreams and they try to implant an idea in their dreams. And then the person that had the dream sort of starts to think that it's their own idea. So this is kind of like what marketing is. You're trying to plant a little idea in someone else's mind where it's gentle enough. You're not just telling them straight up, hey, go buy this, right? You never see ads, very rarely though, sometimes there is. And when you see these form of advertisements, you do not immediately pick up on it. So it comes to me, in my perspective, it's kind of like a subtle way of implanting an idea in your head. And then over time, it just sort of grows in your head until you feel like, oh my gosh, I cannot live without such an item. Same thing with poker, right? Sometimes you need to bluff. If you bluff too hard, it may appear kind of fake. So what you need to do is sort of implant this idea in someone else's mind. If you're bluffing to one other person, let's say there's two players left, then my bread is done actually. Um, Okay. Gosh, that's long. It's like 10 beeps or something. Sometimes in poker, if you have a hand that you know is gonna beat everyone, if you're too rash about this and you try to bet very high in the beginning, you're gonna scare everyone away. So you need to plant an idea in other people's minds that you don't really have the hand that you actually have. In other words, you have to sort of act like you don't have that hand. At the same time, you have to act like you are acting like you have that hand. So other people will actually pick up on this thinking that you're bluffing, but you're only pretending to be bluffing in order to lure them in, in, in order to bet more. So I equate all these subtle hints that retail stores try to implant in your mind, similar to this poker thing. So in retail stores, they use all five senses, right? Sight, smell, sound, taste, touch. In front of the store, they use all kinds of sight tactics, such as bright colors and stuff in order to lure you in. They might have signs saying 50% off, but by the time you walk in, you know, it's only like a tiny section that's 50% off and then the rest is just retail price. There are various colors that could induce you to buy more. Now they do research on this. So is this a fair thing to unleash on consumers? If they do, you know, studies across a thousand people or something, and they know that if, you know, certain combinations of colors is gonna cause you to buy more at a higher percentage rate. Let's think about, is this fair? This is marketing. I mean, you know, typically this is a legal thing to do. This is not like where they put subliminal messages inside advertising where they go buy this item. It's more of more plain, okay? It's more subtle. Therefore, it's legal these days. They know all kinds of tricks such as playing a certain kind of music to cause you to buy more, to cause you to not be able to think clearly about your purchase so that you would just, you know, perhaps just buy it and then leave. They'll have all these very fancy giant displays to serve as a distraction so that it would lower your inhibition to buy. We're all just very simple humans, right? We can be manipulated without even knowing it. In fact, it works better if we don't even suspect it. Now let's move on to the control of smell. You can see they use every access possible, 
all five senses in order to get inside your head. The smell, they might have a certain type of fragrance that is known to cause you to buy more. Or maybe, you know, they might have something that smells very good that'll catch your attention that you'll go in and go buy such item. They'll do other tactics such as putting the very low margin items or things that are high traffic that you absolutely need to buy every single time that most of their customers would buy. So therefore they put it in the farthest part of the store and to get you to walk through the store in as long a distance as possible to get you to view more stuff because the more stuff that you view, the more stuff is you're gonna buy. They'll do other things such as give you free food samples. How many of us have tasted that sample and go, hey, this is pretty good and then you end up buying it. They'll do other things such as, you know, having things on display so that you can easily touch it because once you touch it, you have some sort of connection to it. Then again, you're going to be more prone to buying that item. Now with all these tactics that they use, it means that once you step inside that retail store, you're just at the mercy of that retail store. They're going to do all kinds of tactics and it's just going to bombard you. That's why a lot of times in certain stores, the really good ones that sells you very well, you walk in without needing to meaning to buy anything. And then you walk out with hundreds of dollars of stuff that you didn't even intend to buy in the first place when walking in. Now, what's the solution to all this? If you are not immune to the retail store selling you on stuff, if you're the type that always walk in a store and walk out with bags and bags, a whole shopping cart full of stuff, it's best that you avoid the store altogether if you can. Personally, I've gotten to a point where I actually go to a store just to exercise or something, or just to practice my willpower because I often can walk in a store and walk out with nothing at all. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like, push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.